Thanks for coming, Aaron. <laughs> okay, here we are at Gallery 69 of Tribeca with the New York graffiti legend LA2, a.k.a. Angel Ortiz. We've been preparing for LA2's solo show since that starts on October 6, 2011, and we'd like to talk to the artist himself now, one week before his New York exhibition at Gallery 69. Yeah. So let's get started. Okay. okay, how did you first begin experimenting with graffiti art? Uh, it started uh, through me. Uh, I was, I guess at the age of 10, I was at the boys club. Okay. And we just started writing our names out of the streets. And it, it became a habit. I couldn't stop. I wanted to write my name on the streets day and night, day and night. So anytime um, my parents used to take us to the boys club, so at the boys club there was other graffiti writers that just come with their hands all inked up and stuff like that. And I was like, why you get your hands inked up? That's for filling the markers. I didn't know that the markers you could fill them up with mark with ink. So they would write fill the markers and they would write the ink all day like that. So uh, so they wanted the boys club, I would go to the boys club and my parents would think I was inside the boys club, but at the main time I was outside in the street writing my name. Like that. A lot of pollution. And how were you first introduced to Keith Herring? Um, how I got introduced to Keith Haring, um, how I got introduced to Keith Haring was through another graffiti writer. Um, Keith Haring was doing a mural on the Lowy Side of University 22, and he was, it was a schoolyard, it was for Cherbourg, um, uh, Severed, and Revolt. They were doing, and Fat Five Freddy, they were doing the mural, um, in the schoolyard, and what the, uh, he was probably doing the mural, he was asking other graffiti writers who LA2 is. So one of the kids said, oh, I know LA2, and he said, oh, really? You know, we're, we're, we have a meal, we have a final. And he said, well, yeah, can live right around the neighborhood. So my friend Richie, that's right, and so he came to my door, to the room, on my door, and he said, yo, there's this funny white guy with glasses that's doing the babies and the dogs, and he's asking who's LA2 is. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, come on, just get dressed and go down. So I got dressed and I went downstairs and I seen this uh, Keith Hyrum. His name was Keith. He was doing his figures. It was like, wow, it was incredible. So he asked, uh, I finally went up to him and I said, oh, I'm LA2. He came down the ladders, showed him up, yeah. and he had markers and I wrote my name and he said, oh man, it is the LA2. So that's how we, how I met him. Yeah. All right. And how did you each contribute to the artistic process? Like, did you collaborate with each other a lot? Uh, at the, the, the collaboration thing was um, um, how me and Keith Haring collaborate um, was I went to his house, I was, on, I was at school, and we had a yellow taxi hood. And he said, uh, write your name on the yellow taxi hood. So I wrote my name on the yellow taxi hood. A week later, he put his characters on it, and then I told him do some wiggly lines, whatever, and then he did some wiggly lines, and that was our first collab. It was a yellow taxi in his apartment on Bow Street. And um, oh, two weeks later, after that, he calls me and he says, "Ali, I sold a painting for fourteen hundred dollars, and I got seven hundred dollars for you." I was like, "Incredible!" <laughs> so I go to his house. He gave me $700, he gave me this, and that's how my first money was like that. And at the eight, in, the, in the 80s, nothing was written down in like white. Everything was like a verbal agreement, like a handshake. Before now, everything, in the art world, now everything is, they want paperwork. But every, every little thing is paperwork. Back in the early 80s, So that was my first time I saw the painting was And I noticed a lot of graffiti artists have nicknames. So how did you get yours, and why did you decide to decide to stick with it? Um, the game I uh, stand for a little angel. I'm five four, and I'm tall, so uh, that's how I got L A. Stands for little angel. Um, the number two was my favorite number, and L A. I never picked number one because L A. was the baseball team, and I liked it. Was I was in California, and I'm from New York, so. LA, the original LA is LA, California. That's how I got number two. So every graffiti writer has a name and a number. Some kids write like Coke 2. You write Coke 2. 
something. So stay high, 149. And um, Chris 217. So a lot of the feed writers, they got these numbers. Um, maybe every number is different. Some people like the every code, where they front to one to so every graffiti writer is incredible. So I'm like Min One, Sephir One, Hayes One, Days One. It's so graffiti and numbers, I don't know. That's how, how that's how a lot of graffiti writers that numbers are just funny. Okay. And how did you come into collaboration with Gallery 69? And has your art developed at all while working with this particular gallery? Um, how I got to do um, Gallery 69 was, um, I guess a friend of mine um, was walking around the neighborhood and seeing some of my artwork in, in the gallery. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, yo, there's this gallery that's showing your artwork and you should go down there. So that's how a lot of galleries are. That's how I go to a lot of galleries. So I go down there and I see my artwork that's displayed and I was like, oh shit. Well, how I didn't even get anybody to the show, how this happened. So um, this guy named Jack um, was showing my artwork. And the guy that owns the gallery, I guess his name is Steve, and Steve you knows this guy Jack. So Jack showed the artwork, and I came down there, and I introduced myself to Steve, and they, like, every gallery is like, oh, I'm glad that I met the artist. So he said, um, would you like to have an exhibition? And I said, yes, I would like to have a show there. And he's giving me the opportunity to do my show on a total six. So that's how that happens. Because, you know, the man upstairs works in serious ways, you know. Look, that's my break. That's the break that I got when it comes to my artwork. Sounds like a good break. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, we know that you volunteer a bit teaching graffiti art to New York City school kids. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, this is a gallery um, called the Woodward Gallery on Elder Street um, that had an exhibition of Keith Herring artwork and, and the person that owns the gallery is John and Christine Woodward and she, she got in contact with a friend of mine so she's like, um, LA, um, I'm having a Keith Herring show would you like to put one of your pieces in the show? So I said, cool, I put my pieces in the show and, um, and her daughter, the, the lady Christine, owns the gallery. Her daughter goes to an Arts and Writing Institute. So the Arts and Writing Institute school wanted to take the kids into a field trip. They wanted to show the kids how to do, uh, learn, you know, the kids want to learn graffiti. So this lady, um, daughter goes to that school and the daughter told the principal, hey, my mom owns a gallery. And and she's showing this graffiti artist, and that's how I got, you know, the lady in the gallery, from her daughter, say, no, listen, um, the, um, I talked to, with the principal, and the principal uh, wanted to take the kids on a tour, uh, learn about graffiti, so that's how I uh, first, that's how I got in contact with the kids. The lady said, would you like to give a lecture to the kids? And I said, yes. But before I, my first lecture was through Keith. Uh, the first lecture, Keith Cameron did a lecture back in 84. He used to go to um, what's that, high school or school of visual arts. Keith used to study art before he became uh, an artist. So he was going to school. And uh, when Keith was going to school, he, he wanted to learn about art. And Keith Harry dropped out of school and um, learned the art through the art. He wanted to learn about graffiti art. It's incredible how this whole thing went out. So Keith dropped out of school, right? And, and wanted to write art in the streets. So at that time, I was one of these artists in the streets that my name was everywhere. So that's how me and Keith, you know, Keith learned. He was like a sponge. He wanted to soak art and wanted to know how to be art. So, got the man upset with him, he said, he ran Keith into my life, and I showed Keith everything. But a better way, you know, Keith learned how to do art. I ain't saying for me, but I was one of his inspirations. So that's how 
And in the graffiti right, and the graffiti work, that's how a lot of graffiti right become partners. You know, a lot of kids see a lot of artists on artwork and they want to collaborate when they meet this person. It's like it ends up the bond, so it's a friendship that grows in it. Yes. That's how no, I'm you. Yo, I mean, I'm TJ Sonic. All right. Um, any hopes or expectations for the upcoming show here at Gallery 69? Hope and uh, expectations. Uh, the, the show to me is going to be a good turnout. You know, I'm glad we're filming now. So now it's empty. It's just me. You know what I'm saying? Just me here doing my artwork and uh, and opening night. It's going to be different. You know, it's going to be a lot of people and. The word gets out, and it's a few right there having a show, it gets out, because um, the art game is like that, you know. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of the few writers coming from Brooklyn, from Queens, and everybody will meet here. And plus, everything now is Facebook, so one friend tells another friend, another friend tells another friend, and before you know it, you got a thousand of few friends hanging out, so there'll be a thousand of writers here hanging in the gallery. And, it, and it's good for the, the, it's good for me, and it's good for the gallery too. So the guy Steve, if he's interested in meeting more of the graffiti writers, and like more legends, and he likes to collect art, he'll get a nice crowd now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now Steve, he'll, if he likes art, he'll, a lot of graffiti writers will come. A lot of graffiti writers will come, so he'll meet a lot of graffiti writers too. So if he's into collecting graffiti art, he'll meet thousands and thousands of graffiti writers. Okay. Um, and one thing I noticed is that you have a lot of artwork here, very prolific. So do you ever have like artist block? Do you ever get stuck? No, I don't get stuck because um, basically it's like, um, it's a gift. It's a gift. You know, um, it's like me. When I wake up, if I don't paint, I feel miserable. You know what I'm saying? It's like artists that paint, they wake up and they, they wake up and they want to paint. And I've been, and it's a blessing that from then to now, every time I, I do a painting, I don't know. It's like, um, besides Steve and stuff like that, it's like my um, Mark Kostabi. You know, I, I work with Mark Kostabi. And his brother Paul Kostabi and stuff like that. So the art, I wake up and every day I create. If, if I wake up, I paint. If I don't wake up, that means I'm dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, and one last one. Mm -hmm. Any message you want to tell your fans or art collectors around the world? All, all, all my fans, and it's funny because I'm a fan myself. So, so all my fans come to the show. You know, I'm back. You know, I'm doing my thing. I haven't gone nowhere. And to all my dealers and and my art collectors, um, I guess they keep buying my stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing good. You know, my paintings. It haven't stopped selling. It's incredible. I've been doing this since '80. 1980, you know what I'm saying? And it's 2011, and the resume is still there. You know, every day, every year, I do shows, and collectors can find, you know? And the thing is now, I'm branching on my own, you know what I'm saying? And everybody thinks it's Keith Harris, it's just not Keith Harris, it's me, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm still doing what I'm doing. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. And for fans of LA2 art collectors, please come meet the artist himself on, on Gallery 69 in Tribeca, New York on October 6, 2011 from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And for those who can't make it, um, the artwork of LA2 will also be on the walls of Gallery 69 from October 6 through October 13. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah.